Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 33, and what we're going to do today is solve a mathematical vector problem um, in complete detail. We're going to take a sample problem and solve it from the beginning to the end. Yesterday we wrote down a procedure that dealt with the process by which we solve mathematical vector problems, and it was quite lengthy. Um, there's a number of steps that you need to write down in order to follow this procedure um, diligently. Now, although the procedure is very verbose, I think it's important to realize that there's only a few things that you're really doing in order to solve these problems. And every one of the things that we use to solve mathematical vector problems, um, we've done before. We've already resolved vectors into components in the projectile motion section. We have the ability to combine them back together. For example, if we were trying to find the final displacement of a projectile, um, we would have used uh, the Pythagorean theorem at the end to find the resultant displacement, possibly the resultant velocity at the final position of the projectile. These things are little pieces of uh, content that we then put together to solve, in this case, mathematical vector problems you'll see that the course is a series of small pieces of information, little nuggets of content, that we then combine to uh, solve very complex problems. Now, I would consider mathematical vector problems complex, especially when we're dealing with non-right vectors. If we have a non-right vector, we have to force it to be perpendicular. So we take a vector that may be at an angle, and we find its x and y components. Well, if we do that for every vector, we can just simply add all the x's together to get a super x, what I call Franken vector in the x direction, and we can do the same thing in the y. Well, once we have the total x's and y's, all we're left with is two vectors. Well, two vectors that are at right angles can be combined quite simply. Now remember, perpendicular vectors are independent, so we could treat the x and y as separate problems. However, if we're dealing with a right triangle, that just becomes the legs of our right triangle. The x and the y can be combined using the Pythagorean theorem. So in this case, it would be rx squared plus ry squared equals r squared. And then you can get the angle from tangent, opposite over adjacent. Now, typically, it will be um, y over x, but it's possible that you could draw the vector um, so that you do the tangent with the x over y. But remember, most of the time, as long as you draw the x uh, vector first, then the tangent will be y over x. Once you do that, all you have to do is put it in the correct quadrant in order to get your final answer. Now it seems uh, lengthy, and the first few times it will take long, a uh, long time to do it. And today what I'd like to do is take an entire class and spend it solving a single uh, vector problem from beginning to end. And you'll see that the procedure, once you uh, get into it, um, isn't as difficult as you may uh, first imagine. I know the procedure was lengthy. It took up an entire slide, and the font was really small. But um, that's just so that we make sure we don't skip any of the steps that are important. At the end of this section, we're able to draw vectors by hand and solve for the resultant, or solve it mathematically. And you can solve, at this point, any vector problem that you're, that you're asked to solve. So let's look at that sample problem today and we'll continue with our discussion of vectors. Thank you. All right, here's another problem. Mathematically, we're gonna solve it. It's gonna look strikingly similar to the one we did graphically before, but we're going to use the mathematical method instead. And the key to this is that these are not perpendicular. In fact, we have angles involved. So remember, we're going to sketch them first. So you're going to just sketch an axis. We don't have to worry about the protractor. We're going to draw a vector pointing up to the right. We're going to write 30 degrees here. And we're going to make a little triangle. Hypotenuse is 100 meters per second. And we need to find x and y. And we're going to do the same thing with the other vector. And if we had three vectors, we'd be, do the same thing with any vectors we have. And it's 55 degrees east of south, which is here. This is 55 degrees. Now, 
Before I do anything, when I have an angle that touches the vertical axis, I draw my triangle so that it always requires the angle at the horizontal axis. And that ensures that the x is going to be cosine and the y is going to be sine. And I do that immediately so I don't get confused with which trig function to use. That being said, I need the angle though, which is the complement of 55, which is 35 degrees. And the length is 150 meters per second. Now, I'm going to need to find the x and y components. So the x is going to be 100 cos 30. And the y is going to be 100 sine 30. So 100 times the cos of 30 is 86.6. And sine of 30 is a half, so it's going to be 50. For the 150, I'm going to do times cosine of 35. And I'm going to get 122.9 for the x. And 150 times the sine of 35. I'm going to get 86.0, so 86. Um, I showed the work for one of my components. I don't have to show the work for each set because as long as I show how to do a problem once, that will satisfy the requirement of FSS, formula, formula substitution with units, solution. And the solution should have meters per second. I might lose half a point for that. Now we have four legs. We had two triangles and now we have four legs. So we broke the legs of the triangles and now we have four. And what I do at this point is I make my chart. And I'm going to do V1 and V2 and I'm going to say X and Y for each. I'm going to put them in this chart. Now this was V1, this was V2. So V1, 86.6. 50, and I'm going to put meters per second at the top, so that way the units are there, counts for the whole column. And V2 is 122.9 and 86. Well, that's how we put it in the chart, but then we need to know the directions, so the signs matter. For V1, X is positive, points to the right, Y is positive, points up. X is positive for the V2, however, the Y is negative. And then because we have the chart, we just add down the column to get Rx and Ry, what I call my Franken vectors. It's putting together the body parts. 86.6 plus 122.9 is 209.5 meters per second. And 50 minus 86 gets me negative 36. Without the signs, we'd be in trouble. Now here are the Franken vectors. We feel remorse. We want to put Frankenstein back together. So what we're going to do is sketch Rx and Ry. So Rx goes to the right, Ry goes down. And we don't have to worry about the signs now because the direction of the arrows represent the signs. Now this is a terrible sketch. I mean this, this line's curved. I just drew it freehand. However, because we're doing the mathematical method, we don't have to worry about being precise with our drawing. We're using trig. So now we would do rx squared plus ry squared equals r squared. So Pythagorean theorem 209.5 squared plus 36 squared equals 45,000 and change. Take the square root and I'm left with 212.6. So r is 212.6 meters per second. The angle opposite over adjacent, so tangent. Tangent of Ry, which is 36, divided by 209.5, gets me a small number, second tan, second answer. I have 9.75. So it's at 9.75 degrees, and the sketch allows me to determine the direction, south of east. And once again, we can compare that number to what we got in our graphical uh, section. But this is the more precise answer 
and very little room for error. You can be off by a couple of tenths, but you don't have a range of acceptable responses. And the nine, you could probably round to 10 and be okay. You could also have drawn the RY first. So if we drew, we started here and drew the RY, then the RX, this angle would be the complement. Um, if it were 10, we'd say it's 80. And that would be 80 degrees east of south. So depending upon uh, which one you draw first, that will determine which blank of blank you're going to use. I always draw RX first just because it's the first one in my chart. Um, so mine will typically be um, south of east, north of east, north of west, or south of west. But I could easily have drawn them the other direction. But make sure when you sketch it, you sketch it tip to tail. You don't have to draw it tip to tail. Just sketch it. Okay, another sample problem mathematically. We have the same vectors we solved graphically before, but we're going to do this mathematically. So the protractor and ruler are out the window, and we're going to start by sketching the vectors. Now 135 is in the second quadrant, so I'm going to sketch V1. And I'm going to draw my triangle always touching the x-axis. Now in this case, 135 is here, which means the acute angle is 45. I'm going to sketch the 225. It's going to be down to the uh, left. This is 225, but I need the acute angle, which will be 45. So 45 is our angle for both of these vectors in this case. The problem will be the signs, and we have to watch out for those because a lot of them are negative in this, in this problem. Now for V1, it's going to be 35 miles per hour, cosine 45 degrees, 35 miles per hour, sine 45 degrees. So the math is easy because since we have 45, if I just do cosine 45 times 35, I have 24.75, and that's going to be true for both legs, and it's miles per hour, miles per hour. For V2, I can do it up here, V2, X, V2, Y, I'm going to use 65 times cos 45, and I'm going to get 45.96, and 45.96 miles per hour, miles per hour. So each of the legs are going to be the same for each vector, but the different vectors have unique legs. So for the chart, it's going to be V1, V2, X, Y. If you want to continue the chart, it's going to be R in the X and the Y at the bottom. That's going to be maybe a little thicker, so you know you have to add them together. Now, of course, now it's not going to all be positive, so Maybe a better way to be uh, say it as combine them together, because the positive and negatives um, will interact differently. So for V1, it was 24.75, 24.75, 45.96, 45 45.96. Now the signs are the key to this one. X is negative for V1, Y is positive. And for V2, negative and negative. So when I, when I add them or combine them, 24.75 plus 45.96, my answer is a negative 70.71. And those are miles per hour. And then 24.75 minus 45.96, I have negative 21. 0.21 miles per hour. So both of my Franken vectors are in the negative direction. And the negatives allow us to sketch the answer correctly. So I'm going to do Rx to the left and Ry down. So I go back to my original. My resultant is going to point down to the left. And my angle there is going to be 
Uh, ultimately, it'll be south of west. However, since we're dealing with the XY coordinate system, whatever that angle is, is past 180. So it'll be 180 plus that angle. If this were north, south, east, west, I'd be okay with north, south, east, west. But we started with XY and we have to end with XY. So to get R, it's going to be RX squared plus RY squared. Uh, R squared equals RX squared plus RY squared. And if I substitute 70.71 squared plus 21.21 .21 squared, take the square root of that answer, I have 73.8 miles per hour. And then inverse tan of ry over rx and that would be ry was 21.21 .21 divided by 70.71 second tan second answer I have 16.7 so to put this together I'm gonna to say r equals 73.8 miles per hour at and as we said before, it's 180 plus 16.7, and we have 196.7 degrees. So our final resultant, let's put a hat on it, is 73.8 miles per hour at 196.7 degrees.